Hi friends, my name is Ansha and I am an educator of Fun Academy and you can follow me on our website or you can download the Academy learning app. So uh, in this lesson we will discuss uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm and if you like my lesson please rate, recommend and review and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hi, so um, in this lesson we have Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm, okay? So this is an algorithm used to exchange keys between two parties, okay? The center and the receiver. So the keys must be exchanged, isn't it? The keys must be exchanged with each other to do the encryption and decryption, isn't it? So what happens when the center and receiver exchange keys, then the third party, the attacker can come in between, the attacker can come in between and uh, he also get access to that key because the channels can be insecure isn't it the channels through which we are passing the keys can get insecure and this uh, key can key can be leaked isn't it so uh, now uh, you can think of the damages that can happen if the key gets into the hands of attacker he can decipher any message he can impersonate and all he can attack in any way isn't it so that's why we need a, this kind of an algorithm to make a secure key exchange between two authorized parties. Okay. Now this algorithm is just used for key exchange. So in other algorithms like RSA, we, uh, we studied uh, it can be used for encryption, decryption, digital signature, key exchange, etc. But this is an algorithm for just for key exchange. Okay. This algorithm can be used along with uh, other algorithms for key exchange okay so that is why we need a key exchange algorithm to make this key exchange secure okay so this is a uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm the first is uh, to get the global public elements Q and alpha then Alice will generate the key and then Bob will generate the key then uh, both these users will be calculating the secret key okay so first of all, we need to calculate global public elements Q and alpha. First, you need to choose a value for Q. Now, there is, there is only this condition for Q. Q must be a prime number. Okay. Now, the next condition, next element is alpha. So uh, to choose a value for alpha, there are two conditions. Alpha must be less than Q, which is this number. And alpha must be a primitive root of Q. Now, uh, now for alpha, to choose a value that is less than Q, it's okay, it's very easy. But uh, what is a primitive root? So um, primitive root means if you take all values as power to this number, alpha mod Q, then we must get different or unique values, okay? So primitive root means when raised to positive whole numbers less than 7 must produce unique values in this case, okay? So uh, here I am choosing Q equal to 7, sorry, I... Uh, didn't write it here so q equal to 7 okay let q equal to 7 and then if uh, we need a value we need a primitive root of q then that means if you take let's take a value 3 okay then if you write all positive numbers here as powers 3 raised to 1 3 raised to 2 3 raised to 3 up to all values less than 7 so up to 6 3 raised to 1 2 3 4 5 6 then mode 7 if you do modeless operation you must get unique values or different values okay so here we are getting 3 2 6 4 5 1 all are different values so that is a primitive root now for 7 there is another primitive root 5 so in case of 5 if you take 5 raised to 1 2 3 4 5 6 you get different values 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay now, if you take a 2 or 4 or um, 6 in, in, instead of 5 in, or instead of 3, then you won't get, uh, you won't get different values. The values may get repeated. Now, in that case, it's not a prim primitive root. So, in case of 7, we have two primitive roots, 3 and 5. Choose any one of them. So, let Q equal to 7 and I am choosing alpha as 5. Now, this condition is satisfied. 5 is less than 7 and 5 is a primitive root of 7. Okay. So, now we got our uh, global public elements. Q and alpha. Q equal to 7 and alpha equal to 5. Now, why is this called global public elements? Because these values will be, these values of Q and alpha will be known to everyone. Okay. Now, the next step is Alice, next stage is Alice will be generating her keys. Okay. 
So we have two parties, Alice and Bob, isn't it? So first we are talking about Alice. So first Alice must choose a private key. Okay, so she uh, should select private key X A. Okay, now the private key X A must be less than Q. It's a condition. X A must be less than Q. Now these are our global elements Q and alpha. Q equal to seven and alpha equal to five. Now I need to choose a value. Alice need to choose a value for X A that should be less than. Seven. Now I am taking or I am uh, choosing value three, which is less than seven. So uh, that's totally good. And now the next step is to calculate public key Y A. Okay. Here X represents private and Y represents public. Okay. Now to calculate Y A, that is public key of Alice, uh, we have this equation Y A equal to alpha raised to X A mod Q. Okay. So it is very easy to calculate since we already have the values of alpha, um, x a, and q. Okay. So what is alpha? Alpha is five. So five raised to what is x a three, and what is uh, seven? Sorry, what is q? It's seven. So five raised to three mod seven, you will get six. Okay. So uh, so we got the private key, both private key and public key for Alice. Okay. So x a y a is the key pair for Alice. That is, this is the private key and this is the public key, 3 and 6, okay? Now the second party is Bob, so we need to generate key pair for him also, okay? So first is to choose a private key, XB, okay? Now X represents what? X represents private and Y represents public and this B represents Bob, okay? Now this A represents Alice and this B represents Bob, okay? X is private and Y is public, okay? So uh, for XB, Again, there is this condition x b must be less than q. Okay, so next, uh, so I choose a value for x b that is equal to four. Now four is less than what? Four is less than seven, isn't it? What is q? It's seven. So four is less than seven, so it's also good. So uh, let x b equal to four. That is the private key of Bob equal to four. Now with this, we need to calculate the uh, public key. Okay, and for that we have this equation alpha raised to x b mod Q. Okay. Now we have values for alpha equal to 5, xb equal to what? 4 and q equal to what? 7. So 5 raised to 4 mod 7 will get 2. So that is a private key and public key of Bob. Okay. Pri private key equal to 4 and public key equal to 2. Now you see this for his part to generate his keys, he don't need any other information. He only need his his own private key, he need to choose a value for private key, then using that private key, he can calculate the public key, okay? And for Alice also, she need to choose first the private key, then using that, she can calculate the public key. She don't need any other information from Bob or any other person, okay? Only she need this information and she can calculate this. And the other information like uh, Q uh, and Alpha, these are global information. And this is available to everyone. Okay, so they are using this global elements. But this key pair, like uh, Alice will be having this key pair, 3 and 6. This will not be known to Bob and he, he don't want to know it. Okay, only with this global elements he can calculate his uh, private key and public key. Okay, so we got the global elements, Alice keys and Bob's key. Okay, so that is how. Keys are generated using this algorithm. And next is how secret keys are calculated by both parties. Okay. So uh, till now we don't need it. That is Bob didn't want this information from Alice. And Alice didn't want this information from Bob. They only use the global elements up to this point. Now to calculate secret key, they will share their public keys. Now what is the public key of Alice? Alice public key is what? 6 and Bob's public key is what? 2. Now this information will also be shared. Okay. Now the global elements will be shared and public keys of Alice Y A equal to 6 and Bob Y B equal to 2. This will be shared and the private keys will be kept secret. Okay. Using this they calculate the secret key. Okay. So in case of Alice, Alice will be having this information and uh, her own private key. So uh, to calculate the secret key k, we have this equation k equal to y b whole raised to x a mod q. Now she is having 
yb yb shared isn't it so she has this value yb and q is also shared and xa is private information of ali so she also have that information so using this information she can calculate secret key okay that is equal to 2 raised to 3 mod 7 which is equal to 1 so uh, the key equal to 1 so she got the value 1 for secret key now next is uh, bob will be calculating the secret key okay so a uh, secret key calculation by bob we have this equation k equal to y a whole raised to x b mode q now what about q q is global element so it is shared now what about x b x b is his private key so it's uh, it's known to him and next we have y a y a is the public key of alice and it is also shared so uh, he or already have all this information and using this information he can calculate the secret key so k equal to what is y a y a is 6 and what is x b it's 4 so 6 raised to 4 mode what is q 7 so 6 raised to 4 mode 7 will be equal to 1 okay now you can check this the calculation part you can check 2 raised to 3 mode 7 and you can check 6 raised to 4 4 mode 7 which will be equal to 1 now without even sharing the keys without even passing the keys uh, through any channel they calculated the secret key and which are equal see these keys are equal isn't it so that is the security of diffie hellman key exchange algorithm they don't even need to pass the keys they can calculate with some information okay some information which are public and some information which are private okay so they can calculate secret keys and which will be equal with which will be same for both the parties okay so that is Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. Okay. Thank you.